Last but not least, Aries. My Aries Seeker. Hi, welcome to the Existential Shift. My name is Morgane, if you're new. And this is your monthly tarot scope for October. Happy Halloween. Happy October. Um, in honors of 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, multiple 10s in my life. <laughs> Um, on October 10th, I'll be doing a live Q&A. You get to chat with me and ask me questions, spirituality, energy, philosophy, whatnot you have in mind. So I'm looking forward to see you then. Um, okay, let's get to it. No oh, wow. Aries, you guys are my inner horns. My Aries is in Mercury and in Venus, and I'm a Taurus, so... Horns on the outside, horns on the inside. Don't mess with the Zohan. Okay. I love you guys. You guys are just so grounded and so feisty at the same time. Wonderful. Cards that flipped in the middle of the deck. Judgment. Big start, huh? A bunch of cards fell down. Six, actually. Normally, I would not take them because it's a lot, but I'm, I'm going to take them. Now I know why. Ten of Swords, right after Judgment. The Hangman, okay. Painful, yet super healthy start. I'll explain. Nine of Cups. King of Wands, here you are, hi. Looking st straight at Nine of Cups. Five of Pentacles, and you're turning your back to Five of Pentacles. Ten of Pentacles, wow. Bam. Aries Boom, I think that's how I'm gonna call this video. I'm gonna put the deck aside. I have seven cards on the table and they're worthy of Addressing. So, I can't avoid the symbolism. Judgment, the rising of the dead. Death, the rising of the sun. Very, very, very strong um, awakening of the mind of the awareness now there is something that we are realizing Aries it's big it could be very different than what we thought we knew a different perspective a different state of mind a different state of existence and it's mind-blowing now the body aka the 3D existence, our mundane life, our, our actions, our choices, our behavior, even perhaps, um, hasn't necessarily yet aligned with those realizations because when it's so big, it, it's almost like you're just about to wake up from a very long, dark night of the soul and there's a state um, of sleep that could be very terrifying. It happened to me once in my life. I forget the name of it. I forget the definition, but it's what happens when um, you're sleeping, but then your brain wakes up. It's no longer in sleep mode. Your body has it. So you might even be opening your eyes, but you can't move. There's no... Uh, communication between the conscious and the subconscious there's no communication between the brain and the body you almost feel paralyzed I had it once it's really really terrifying uh, when, when you're going through it and you don't know and you don't understand what that is and there's okay so the brain is awake maybe the eyes are open and you can see but you can't move your limbs your body hasn't yet woke up it's still asleep your soul is woke wide awake you know something now that you didn't know sooner. For a really long time, you didn't know. 
You've been living in a state of mind where you thought you were in a cognitive understanding of reality, of your reality, of who and what you are. But you don't know what you don't know, right? So when, when you now or soon to be waking up, you'll be like, how, why did I not know? And it will be so mind-blowing. Now, it doesn't have to be a huge thing. It, it can be something big to you, relative to you, okay? But your body is still, wait, what? Now, when I say body, it's it's an analogy, right? I mean, you're... Your behavior, your 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 life, your choices. For example, I now really realize that I'm not supposed to be in this job. What was I doing here for the past 10, 12 years? Oh my! What? And you're you're sitting there in the office or in a place or whatever, and you're like, "Who are these people? What am I doing here?" You haven't yet quit. You haven't yet walked out. You haven't yet found a new job. But you're just mind blown. Same can go for a relationship. Same can go to a state of mind, of a set of beliefs. Um, this is very strong. Now, look at him. This is an angel calling and the dead are arising. This, you know, the end of a very painful cycle, but the sun is now coming up. And he's, yes, he's, he's upside down. He's in reverse, but his head is glowing. Okay, his awareness, his consciousness is glowing. So we can't say it's bad. We can't say it feels good. It might be awe, you know, kind of an awe state. It might be inspiring. It might be really interesting and fascinating. But it's also very confusing and very painful. And like, it's almost like sitting at a restaurant and you can sit there for hours and everything is great. But then you want to get up and leave for whatever reason. You're done. And okay, so you're asking for the check and then everything takes forever until the server sees you and asking for the check and then he okay they heard you but until they bring it over okay they brought it over but then it sits on the table with your credit card for an hour until they take it away and then until they bring it back and so on and you've been sitting in the restaurant for like three hours before that didn't even notice time passing by but now that you know that you need to get up and go it's painfully slow everything you just lose the patience and now you're like oh okay now that I really know what I want, now that it dawns on me, it might be something that has been around you for a really long time that you're suddenly seeing. Now that I really got this understanding, I can't be in this state of mind that maybe I wasn't even aware that I was in, in the state of lacking either I was lacking love or lacking fulfillment or lacking uh, stability or lacking what spiritual enlightenment, whatever, whatever you, it is that you were lacking. But you didn't really feel the lack until you saw the other possibilities, right? You can't miss what you, what you never had. So if you never knew what it is that you can have and you didn't miss it, you didn't crave it, but your soul has, and it's been trying to push you there, and suddenly it clicks, it hits, presses the button, and you're wide awake. You're like, wait, yeah, th th that's the thing. Oh, 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 oh my God, that's the thing. I, I need to get there. I need to do something. I need, ah. And the king of wands does can't take control. He owns it, but here's the thing. He's a very active force of fire, of a mundane type of behavior, masculine behavior. But still, it's something that potentially for some of you, I understand if it doesn't resonate with all of you and you're welcome to watch your other placement, your natal, your other placement of your natal chart, like moon, rising, Venus. Um, but for those of you who resonate with this, this is big. It's like, okay, as much as I know what to do from my mundane character, Wait, how do I address all that? Like, because this is the rising of the dead, so I feel like it might be a little big on me. And then there's the equivalent of the past of what you have been in so far, but you didn't see it as the Five of Pentacles. You didn't know you were in the Five of Pentacles. You didn't know you were cold until you discovered the sun. You didn't know you were lonely until you discovered your true love. You didn't know you were lacking passion at your job until you realized what it is that you truly want to do. 
You didn't know you were tired until you actually went about and put your head on the pillow. But from there, look at the sleep. From the Five of Pentacles to the Ten of Pentacles. Boom. Once there's that realization with the Ten, right? Now notice there's something interesting this, with these two pairs. I have this Ten of Swords that is half of Judgment, because Judgment is 20. The bad aspect of the Ten is half of the Awakening. Knowing what to end, what to finish, what cycle to go beyond. It's half the journey, a half the solution. But then to get from this type of ten to this type of ten, the ten of pentacles, we need to go from the five of pentacles, which is half. This is half of this, and this is half of this. We need to go from here to here. So we need a strong awakening that is doubled than what we're feeling right now, that is doubled of how we're living right now, I'm sorry, in order to get to a double type of better life than how we're living right now. You see the sense in this? Numbers talk. There's always synchronicity. The cards are brilliant. I will go more into it in the extended because that's what I do in the extended. I talk about the numerological aspect. I take the repetitive numbers in the cards and I take the uh, rep repetitive energies or elements and I create a new, like, same cards, only different placement. Like, I, I, I move around the pieces of the puzzle and I see a new image. Um, and that's just the first part of the extended, so stay tuned. Anyway, we're still here in the general reading. Whatever sort of understanding, realizations, awakening that you're going through right now, first, denial, wait, no, it can't be that I was living in a lie or wasn't aware of this thing so far, how, how, what? How did that pass me? Then there's a change of perspective, perspection, or perception, understanding what needs to be changed, what sort of sacrifices need to be done, moving on from one state of mind to the other, and then being ready, being ready to go get it. Wish fulfilled. This is the Nine of Cups. True satisfaction. This is also um, sexual satisfaction, this combination. sexual drive could be the drive of the ego to go get what you want and it's okay the ego i'm not into the whole um spiritual lollipop aspect of spirituality where the ego is completely bad and sex is evil and i'm not in the, that religious place the ego is very important for us in order for us to manifest and create we need to know what we want in order for us to know what we want we need to have ego that has desires And here's the thing, once you go get it, Aries, once you align, once you understand, the road from this to this will be immediate. Boom. Two people, potentially something with five, either five weeks, five months, five years of going through a really negative journey, harsh journey, to a brand new cycle of abundance and joy and ease. Potentially, if you're a married couple or a couple that has been together for a long time and you've had a lot of um, battles and conflicts not not necessarily between the two of you but potentially most likely you against the world like like you had like a lot of financial issues um a lot of um hazards potentially 10 years of that now something shifts changes in your perspective you've learned some sort of a spiritual lesson you finished some sort of karmic cycle and then energy and then and then there's uh, room for new energy to come in. Uh, benefic energy.
October is fierce for you, Aries. You are fierce in October. Hmm. Three of Cups and the Magician. Who's the water sign? Who's the Cancer? Strength, Chariot, Knight of Wands, King of Cups. Actually, King of Cups, Knight of Wands, Chariot, Strength. Which I like this chronological order better. Let's look. I'm thinking. I'm soaking. <laughs> Manifesting a strong emotional desire. This does not speak to those of you out there who have a tendency for compulsion, compulsive behavior, um, stalking, harassing, possessiveness. This is not a go to keep harassing someone. <coughs> Sorry. If someone has set up very clear boundaries that they don't want to talk to you or be around you, then this does not speak to you, Aries, okay? This is a mutual thing. So for those of you who are in an emotional state of mind, some sort of a connection, that is grabbing you, grabbing you, Emotionally, spiritually, mentally, mostly passion. Then now that you're tapped into your powers, your true knowledge and communication, now that you're listening to the universe, some of you haven't been listening to the universe and now the universe is like, bam on your head like hey uh, are you listening to me now now that you get it you start working with your power this is a strong uh, combination for manifestation because the three of cups speaks of, speaks of manifesting from joy from happiness from uh, excitement you know creating what it is that you want to have in your life so if you want to have laughter and happiness and you smile and you laugh and you bring it to others aka it comes back to you the magician is partly that but also many other types of manifestation he manifests from his actions from his mind from his heart and from his spirit he's very balanced he knows the secrets of the world and he knows how to work with the elements this is also someone who knows how to work a crowd. An entertainer, entertainer, a host, um, some sort of a speaker. Someone who really knows how to work a crowd and he's used to, he or she, they are used to having people around them kind of surrounding them. But now there seems to be a very um, more specific focus kind of emotional target goal that you really want to go about and get. Or someone else wants to come and get you. I don't know. But Aries, this is, you're very strong here. So, but also a water sign is very strong here. Water and fire. Very, very um, present in this reading. One, two, three, fire characters. One, two, three, water characters. Yep. Yeah. 
this could also slightly potentially represent emotional immaturity, wanting to act on your whim, what you feel like, what you want. And this is the opposite. This is a more mature energy of wanting to fight for something, but from a very mature, conscious place, an aware place for something that is very worthy, that comes from a higher state of mind as opposed to a more like emotional, uh, possessive, kind of um, impulsive state of mind. I feel like I have two types of Aries watching me right now. One is the stalker, uh, childish energy. I'm sorry if it's you, but you need to be told that wants what they want, the way they want, when they want, you can't get it. And then there's the other energy that is more um, still assertive, but not in a, there's a lot of strength here, a lot of control here, but this is not uh, emotional manipulative control, childish control, who gets to say the last word type of control. This is spiritual self-control. These are two individuals that seek to control themselves. And from that, their spirit is very, very resonating, very, um, the frequency resonates in a very high vibration. Does that make sense? I hope I, hope I said it right. Sometimes I confuse the uh, order of words in English. Yeah, so I feel like there's two levels of um, evolved and devolved kind of thing. You know what and where you are, I hope. Because <laughs> look, I have the water energy and the fire energy, the water energy and the fire energy. This is the very high potential of this combination and this is the very low potential of this combination. There's nothing wrong with the King of Cups with, and with the Knight of Wands. They can say completely different things, but it's this combination and comparing this to this that makes me say it, okay? There's emotional expression um, and fiery uh, assertiveness that are very, that are full of life and they're balanced and they're beautiful and they're passionate and they're loving and they create, see the yellow around them. And there's emotional expression and a fiery expression that is very um, insecure. They therefore try to possess, unable to let go, a little bit selfish, a little bit childish, a little bit um, compulsive. See, it's the same scale, only this is one expression, more evolved expression. This is um, the other side of the scale, less evolved expression. You want to be the magician, Aries. You want to attain things that you want to attain from freedom, from energy of freedom and love and creativity and flow. It's the only way to go about it. There is no manifestation that comes from um, fear and wanting to control other people. It doesn't work. It works if you work from your own fears and your own demons to process yourself and then turn that at, uh, allegedly dark energy into light energy and manifest beauty from there, kind of transmute one type of energy to another type of energy and just taking, you know, just focusing on the fact that energy is energy, right? That's one thing, but it's a whole other thing. to let those demons and dark aspects of yourself control you, therefore try to control the environment and manifest from there. Does that make sense? If you have someone in your life that behaves in a very passionate, loving way, and you want to know which one is it, is it this type of passionate and loving, or is it this type of passionate and loving, listen to your body and how you feel around them. It's very simple. If you feel guarded, uncomfortable, it's not the benevolent aspect. If you feel open-hearted, trusting, and excited, okay, it's very simple. There's no logic. Notice the only swords that I have on the table are the Ten of Swords, and they're like leaving the reading. Like Ten of Swords is the end of the element of the swords. And it's interesting because I had several readings that the element of swords was just wasn't there. 
except for like specific situation and the extended ones, for example, that went a little bit more accurate to specific narratives of specific people who were watching, right? But generally, the collective is starting to leave the swords, aka leave the karma, leave the analysis paralysis, and go to a state of mind that is more heart-based. Um, and fire-based, and earth-based, water, heart. We need to start feeling alive from our body and from our heart and from our passion and less from our mind. Our mind served its dues so far, right? It has taught us a lot. It also had made us suffer and it also helped us process the suffering. But now that we have the realizations and the understandings, we can, we can let go of it. Not to say to turn off your mind, silly. <laughs> it's an analogy. It's sim symbolic, right? Let's keep going. You want to go towards something. Someone, something wants to come towards you. You're, you're going towards you. Okay. Eight of Swords and the Hermit. Someone is feeling stuck in their head. I just spoke about releasing the swords and it came back in the worst way. Eight of Swords. Not the worst way, but you know, the, the way that we, we self-impose on ourselves. Especially with the Hermit. Someone is really... um. There's a solitude that is, you know, going within in order to make really deep understandings and experience awakening. And then there's a the solitude that just have you go inside, like a loop inside your head of fears and anxieties and what not can go wrong and who's lying and who's deceiving and what is right and what is wrong. And what, like this is, this is a loop. This is being in a loop. Also, if someone is feeling this way or is, or is caught in a detriment situation or in a very tough situation, this is an individual with a Virgo energy that wants to reach out and help but doesn't necessarily know why, how. They're like kind of in their head thinking about it. Don't overthink. The Eight of Swords says to cut out, to cut through the analysis paralysis. This reading is action-oriented, okay? But there's very much the energy of like this cold inner world that you feel stuck in or someone is feeling stuck in. Two eights, two sevens, two nines, two tens, seven, eight, nine, ten, double. Two sevens, two eight, two nines, two tens. Seven, eight, nine, ten, the completion of the cycle doubled. We'll talk about it in the extended. We'll rearrange the reading. Let's keep going for my amazing Aries for the month of October. Let's figure this out. What's going on here? What's going on here? We're going to finish up, by the way, after I show you the extended, we're going to finish up with messages from the Akashic Tarot, a.k.a. the Akashic Records, who are mind-blowing. I'm super excited about that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Show me this. Guide me through this. Eight of Swords and Nine of... And I'm sorry, and the Hermit. We also have the element of the spiritual warrior here. We'll talk about it when we'll do the... Uh, when we'll take all the majors. What else is there for me to tell Aries for the month of October? Please, Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. The 
another eight. We've been getting a lot of triple eights in the reading recently. Um, okay. Some of you are really focusing on your work uh, because all of this is too much, and you're like, I just, I'm, I'm just gonna work and not, you know, and try to avoid figuring this out, realizing this out, addressing this. It's so much. It's too much. I don't know how to handle this. But here's the thing. When you have judgment in the reading, you can't escape it. It will keep calling you. It will nag you in your dreams. It will nag you in the subconscious. It will nag you in signs on buses that will, you'll see passing by you. It will just be around you until you address it. Until you own up to it and act with it. There has to be a mundane reaction to this. Okay, your daily life, your body needs to wake up with your mind. But Eight of Pentacles, you know, it's it's not a bad card. You're working hard for something and you will achieve results. Question, the only thing is, it might be the escapism, like, oh, I, I do this so much, I'm just going to work. <laughs> but this can also be a meditative state. You, you really want to think and process it. But the thing is, this is happening now, um, Aries. Movement is, a, you know, um, there's a calling for movement now, for taking control over a situation now, for manifesting now, for waking up now. How long have you been in this loop, Aries? Of overthinking, of overanalyzing, of, of escaping for work? Be honest. How long? How long? Long, long time ago. Lovely. Three of Wands, Page of Pentacles, Four of Wands, Three of Pentacles. Okay. Um, some of you wanting to make an offer. You're looking towards an horizon. You have some sort of, um, I don't know, inspiration, idea, want, will, and it requires cooperation. So you're kind of talking about a little here, a little there, or maybe offering something to someone, and it will be accepted with a positive answer, okay? There's a good potential of cooperation and working together and building something. This could be, um, hey, if you're in a relationship, you, you're offering the other person to move in together, for example. Um, this could be working on the home, working on the house. This could be a house move. Where, where's the chariot? Sorry. Definitely could be a house move with someone special. This could be marriage. This could be engagement. I have a lot of cards of love and partnership here. This very much might well be a proposal. Now, obviously, not all of you are proposing. But this could be anything that is going from the solitary to the partnered. Now, this is very positive type of um, construction or building or creation because it's it has the exterior positive aspect and the interior positive aspect. A.K. Okay, you know how uh, some. Uh, Buildings, for example, can look really crumbling from the outside, like really old and really stale. But then you go inside of the apartment and everything is renovated and beautiful and gorgeous. So that will be the Three of Pentacles, right? Or on the outside, something looks amazing and beautiful and serene and, and majestic and pretty. But then you go inside and everything is crumbling down and filled with rot and mold. So this is a great combination of something that is good and strong and beautiful outside and inside. Hmm. 
you really need to hold on. You're, you're very confused. You're very paranoid. You're very scared, or someone is. If you having, if some of you maybe didn't resonate with this, maybe you'll resonate with that, or, or you have a duality. Um, there's pessimism. There's worrying. There's anxiety, uh, fear of judgment, wanting to make clear decisions and leave what's not good for us. There's a lot of doubts, a lot of fears, a lot of agony in this specific combination. But guess what? When you tap into your creative force and when you're willing to really um, change in according to your understandings and really, really wake up, this is the life and death. This is Hades and Demeter. He's the goddess of life and, this, and the, he's the god of death, right? It's very strong forces. Maybe these two forces are potentially uniting here. Maybe not. Maybe this is inner. Maybe it's inside of you, Aries. You're woke. All right. I can't take all these cards. It's too much. This was just like a, a small statement. But let's see your extended and then go to the Akashic Tarot. Okay? Now you'll have to be patient with me for a second because here's, you know, I need to kind of look at everything that is on the table and rearrange. I have a lot of things going on here. So I want to make sure I'm not missing out anything. Only one page. Just going to put all the um, major arcanas here. Mm, two kings. Knight. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Two eights. Another three here. I'll explain. Be patient. <laughs> two tens. Um, okay. All right, I wanted to address that seven thing. Okay. Bear with me, guys. This is interesting. You get to see what I do in my head. Um, seven, seven, right? Eight, eight, eight. Nine. And then the tens. Whew. Interesting read. This was made in this order. Okay. Now. After I talk about this, I'll take back the majors and connect them back here. We have another three. So we have four threes. Actually, five threes because 12 is also three. Okay, it's going to be a long extended. because <laughs> um, I have a lot of things going on here that I want to talk about. So I'm going to play with the cards on the table and give different narratives. How it goes. And you're gonna stick around here and I'll connect you here at one point. Okay. First part of your extended, right? After this, after I manage to master this master, because there's a lot of things going on, um, I'll clean the table, make a new shuffle, and have a Celtic cross. A Celtic cross reading is very different than the intuitive readings that we do in the general readings. Uh, it's 10 cards that are placed on the table, and they have very specific locations with very specific meanings, and it brings a very specific narrative. Um, and also these right here right now bring new narratives and other stuff coming up. So, And then we finish up with a message from the rune. So I'm looking forward to seeing the extended link below. Uh, below, there's also um, information for my special that I'm doing for uh, private readings. doesn't matter where you are in the world. It's global. So I do private sessions, and I have special prices for October. So check it out below. And also Tarot Masterclass. If you want to learn tarot from me, link is also below. Everything is below in the, inf in the magical information box. Uh, I already mentioned October 10th Q&A live. Ooh. 
<laughs> it's my first live. I know I know everybody does it all the time. For me, it's the first time, so I'm excited. And I think we got that covered. Oh, also, I want to tell you guys, I always really recommend to watch your readings from the past month. So if this is for October, go back to September because this journey is about learning and growing. Okay? And we... It's not just about what will be. And sometimes we forget. We go into the middle of the month. We don't remember what someone told us three weeks ago. But then when we watch it again after experiencing the month, uh, looking back, then we have great realizations and we get to learn a lot from it. I do it all the time. I always go back to my past month's reading. And other readers that I love, I go back to their readings for prior months as well. Okay. Dear Akashic Tarot, I'm requesting for a clear, accurate, Benevolent message from my amazing Aries Seeker from the Akashic Records, from the Akashic Library, from their higher self. Message for Aries from the Akashic Records. Message for Aries from the Akashic Records, please. For the month of October. When it falls, it falls. Mm. Messages for Aries for October, please. Message for Aries. Ooh. Look how pretty they are, by the way. So, Six of Roses, the War of the Roses. There's two rows here. White Rose is up with the banner. Red Rose Banners is down. The, the banner with both the red rose and the white rose combination is on the ground. Let's read. <laughs> Six of roses. Here it is. The War of the Roses. Storm clouds gather in the sky. Two lines of mountain knights stand at the ready facing each other across a clear field of battle. The left side carries the banner of the white rose, the right carry, carries the red rose. This card depicts a war within a relationship and or a battle within your heart about a relationship. Most often this relationship is romantic in nature, but this card could also refer to a coworker, partner, boss, or family member. There could be power plays and at the very least, there is a lack of reciprocal reciprocity and communication. You are at an impasse. Your intuition or your spirit, the white rose, has told you that, the, that this experience is not a supportive one. But your passions, fears, and needs, the red rose, keep you from listening. You have tried to bring the two together, as indicated by the dirty flag with the combined white and red rose on the ground. But what's happening in this relationship is not compatible with your spirit's view for you. So there you stand, your spirit and your passions, just watching and waiting. This situation is nothing less than karmic, and it is time to listen and take action. Awareness, vision, and self-honoring are required now for you to position yourself best and make plans to leave the battlefield. Yeah. Uh, and I have, I don't, I don't do it normally, but I know I need to bring you guys another message for another type. This was speaking to some, to some of you, definitely, most definitely, Aries. Some of you are listening to this and re listen to this and resonated. Um, but there's another group of you. Oh, and as I was saying, another group of you, Aries, that this is the message that they need to receive. Loving elementals baby here with all the fairies around okay yeah I, I i knew the way it flew out like 
it needed to be spoken to another group of you. So I'm giving you another mess message, Aries. You guys are special. All right. Three of roses. There it is. Loving elementals. Playful fairies and water spirits frolic in the air around a little child. They fill the air with expanding joy and happiness. Although many people don't believe in the elementals, nature spirits of all kinds do exist, and they have more power than can be imagined. They, leave, they live in the elements of earth, air, wind, and fire and they're willing to share the guidance, well-being, and inspiration of the Akashic Records that exist in the nature world, in the natural world, I'm sorry. This card is here to tell you that joy will soon be increasing. It also encourages you to remember to have fun. Bring more playfulness to your daily life. Let yourself sing a little and laugh a lot. Call on the elementals to inspire you in this and in other areas. They are a fund of fun and up an upliftment that can expand the joy in your life in great measure. Those of you who knew that the Six of Roses spoke to them, you're right. Those of you who feel more, who feel more at ease with this, you're right. General readings. I have a lot of people watching me. I just, I knew I needed to give another message. All right. Okay. All right, guys, so that was it for the general. I will see you in a second, the extended reading with this party over here and then the Celtic cross and then the rune message, uh, rune message for the next month. Happy Halloween. I'm thinking about dressing up for the readings of November at the end of October. I don't know yet. I'm super excited to uh, talk to you guys on October 10th, so hope you'll join. Um, and don't forget the magical information box because links below to extended, to Terra Masterclass, and information about my general reads. If you haven't subscribed yet, this is your opportunity. Give me the love. Thank you, guys. Thank you, my seekers. I'll see you next month regardless. Mwah.